Hello and a warm welcome to the Backstage Pass, a show that goes behind the scenes of the performing arts to find out what really happens behind all the glitz and glamour. Today, I chat in the Pole People Dance and Fitness Studios with the incredible aerialist and simply gorgeous individual, Jules. Jules trained at Central School of Ballet, then went on to musicals in the West End, such as The Lion King. He then got into pole dance, very quickly competing and becoming a champion. Wanting to combine pole and dance, he entered the world of cabaret as an aerialist. And oh my God, he's amazing. Jules performs at venues such as Bunga Bunga and the Phoenix Arts Club, where I had the absolute pleasure of watching Jules perform. We talk about the incredible performing arts industry from ballet to cabaret, how important it is to strip back when entering a new industry and how to keep things fresh. We also discuss how important it is to go and watch a show and the benefits of human interaction. Jules also talks about his experience in relationships because when in a career such as this, it really does take priority. He's remarkable, versatile, and very inspirational. Brace yourself. It's a good one. So I just want to just note that you are just a simply magnificent performer. You have just got so much style, so much energy, and you're so, so unique. And I absolutely love your strength and your passion. But where did it come from? Was it from your family? Where did it come from? Um, it came from, I think, uh, being a crazy child with maybe ADHD. It wasn't diagnosed back then. Right. Um, my energy was through the roof. It was literally through the roof. I couldn't sit down. I was bouncing around. So luckily my dad put me in um, after school activities. So every day I did, one day I did football, one day I did gymnastics, one day I did athletics. I to level me out. And so I go home and I'd be tired and sleep. So mm -hmm. I've always had a lot of energy. I've always liked running around and just creating and, you know, adventures and stuff like that. So I think when I, progressed to dance and to circus, it was just a natural progression because it was not just a physical form of moving, but it was an artistic form of moving as well. Mm. So it allowed me to do both my creativity as well as my technique and strength and just everything, you know, you literally put everything you have into that art form because there's no, there's no sort of, I'll do it part time. It's all or nothing. So I think it was a good, good focal point for me. Yeah, definitely. And it's really good to get that discipline in early as well. Mm -hmm. And really good that you weren't just doing dance, but you're doing lots of different types of things to see what you liked best. I think that's really yes. good because you weren't put into just one particular thing. You weren't driven by your parents in one or, you know, one direction or the other. It was like, try lots of things. I know it was, let's make this kid tired. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there was no, oh, we'll, there's, there's no sort of, theatre mum or dad it was just get him out of the house so he doesn't tear it up um but yeah the good thing is I was able to as I got I was like 15 or 16 15 I think it was where I sort of narrowed down it was athletics or dance and they were the two so I was able to over the years drop things off and like you say actually focus and have discipline on something more interested in something I was I was I, I sort of took more time I wanted to spend more time on that particular style of sport or dance or whatever it was to just really because it was just really interesting mm. and what was it that made you like dancing more than anything else um michael jackson and <laughs> Jack. the two of them now, okay here's a really funny story so i remember watching them in the 90s and they were both signed to sony i think it was and janet signed like a 22 million dollar deal gosh and then it was the biggest they ever had in the history of sony and then about three weeks later michael signs like a 25 million dollar deal a uh, dollar deal and then there was a picture of both of them whether i think tony Matola and they were just all laughing ha, 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 with these big massive checks oh my just God. looking at that picture thinking that's a lot of money in that one picture and then i thought well if michael jackson's on stage and he's at the very front that's 25 million just mm -hmm. in the front row mm -hmm. The next line of dancers, 
I generally thought, oh, they must be on what, 22 million. I thought, then the next line, 20, 21 million, 20, I thought, put me in the back, it's not a problem. If I'm earning like 4 million a year, I'm at the back, just, you know, giving a hand or whatever. I, yeah, I didn't know better. And I didn't know anyone that knew any better to advise me because had I known any different, I probably would have made a different choice in my career. But hey, I can't. I've loved it. I've loved it. It's not been perfect. It's not been easy. Um, it is tough. It is a tough, tough industry. People only see the outside and they should only see the outside. They shouldn't mm. know how much hard work goes into it, not just in the studio, but actually the grafting, the admin work, the um, undercutting, the, you know, you're not good enough and sort of thing. There's, there's a whole thing that goes with it. You understand that as well from mm. your dance background. You know yeah. the psychological um, journeys and, and obstacles that we go through, we have to go through to make it to the next step. Because if, so if you're not strong enough to do that, then it's, you can't, then you can't. Because you might be physically strong and wonderful, but actually if you mentally can't deal with this industry, it's, it will eat you up. And, mm. you know, I want everyone, even if you might step away from it sooner than what you think you should have done ideally i want everyone to have the best time and also be happy be happy and be healthy because that's the most important thing because once we're done i'm where this industry was here before me it'll be here after me but i have to look after me. yes that's the most important thing, definitely so. definitely yeah. and i think so many people they you know you, you are you're 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 going to watch a show and you're just seeing at face value how wonderful it is but the the prep that goes into mm. just that small segment that they're that they're seeing yeah. you know it's just a highlight of what you can actually do mm -hmm. and they don't see that you're in the studio working your ass off during the day the yes the admin the looking after mm -hmm. yourself the eating at the right times doing mm -hmm. all of this stuff yeah. um, but i think it is important for people to know a little bit more i think this is the beauty of this podcast is just to let people in but it's, you know, it's all relative. Some people are mm. going to want to talk about everything that happens behind the scenes and other people are going to say, do you know, I'm just going to let you see the magic and just a little bit behind that, you know, yeah. and that's fine. It, you know, it all depends on the person. I guess. I agree. Yeah. I think you, you don't want to, you know, I didn't know we've all got a job to do, um, but we're still human, you know, they, I do believe that as a performer, as a whatever style of performer, if you feel going to turn up to the job, you have to do the job. We're all human, we have stuff that goes on, family, friends, partners, everything. Um, but if you turn up to the job, you have to do the job, mm. no matter what. Also, as much as you can, it depends on your social uh, experience with everyone. It depends how much you can offlay to them, because also other people are getting ready for the show as well. So they need to get to They need to do what they need to do physically, mentally. They might not be want to be in a room where there's too much negativity mm. going on because then it's not fair on them to mentally get ready for the show that a lot of people have spent a lot of money on. Bear in mind, that might be the first time they've ever seen any kind of show as well. So that's our responsibility to create this fantasy for the audience. That's what we're doing. You've paid money to see something so magical and a fantasy. We're supposed to take you out of the norm, out mm. of that world that's what we paid for. So it goes both ways. Yes. It really does. So it's nice, yeah, like you say, this, to kind of give people a little bit of an insight that actually what goes on um, or some people just want to think it's just so magical yeah i mean it is magical even even the bits behind it because i think artists are magic mm -hmm. the, you know having to do so much to pull something together and sometimes really really quickly it's mm -hmm. not for the faint of heart of you know you really got to be so strong mentally and physically to pull the, these things together you know being seasonal you know christmas you got to change the acts up easter got to change it again halloween got to change it again you've got mm -hmm. skills but you're you're modifying your acts and changing it all the time and you know yeah. it's it is hard grind it really yeah. really is it is i think i remember last christmas i think the whole christmas season i didn't actually physically rehearse anything that i had to do because it was back to back to back to back to back with christmas contracts which was lovely and again it's that thing of i'll say yes to everything and um, not factor in sleep or rest or rehearsal or costumes, logistics, you know, is this going to work with this? this is, um, and I would be cutting my own music and listening to my music and I'd have my sections. I, I know what moves I can do, mm. but I 
Um, I don't think at all I actually rehearsed it once before I got on stage. It was all in my mind. You know the music well enough. You know your skill set well enough. You just have to go off the fly. Obviously professional enough and I had enough skills and um, work in my bank to be able to go, right, on a bad day, if I have to pull something out, I can do this because I've been doing it for years and this is what my training is for. But last year was a little bit, uh, bit of a test, I won't lie. Oh my goodness. I mean, I saw you perform for the first time last Christmas mm-hmm. and you seem to have it all together. But you know, <laughs> like it's, you know, what you're seeing and what you're feeling is, is very, very, very different yeah. for sure. You mentioned that you trained at the Central School of Ballet. Yes. So you went through the ballet route first. And what was that like? Um, very similar to you. Yes, ballet was a, it was a great one. It was a tough one. Um, I don't have a ballet. I didn't have one. It was a struggle. Every day was an absolute struggle physically um, mm-hmm. because it wasn't something that came to me naturally. And most of the kids in the class were from a ballet background. So they've been doing this since they were very, very young. Um, so oh, I was very jealous of everyone else. I was like, why are you, why is your lines a lot nicer than mine? I'm just really, I'm trying really hard. Why doesn't it, why do I, why don't I look like you? <laughs> it just Aww. thinks of us. And then, and it's not, I was not their fault as well, but you naturally become, and then I was always at the bottom of the class. I mean, the fact that I graduated was nothing short of a miracle. I really thought I was going to get kicked out all the time. But very early on, quite a few male teachers said to me, because of the way I am, the way I move, you can always learn styles after whatever styles but they all said to me get your ballet training now get that that is an absolute foundation and that'll be if you are smart with that foundation of that that skill that will see you through to the end of your career because Mm. anything else you can adjust on top of that ballet technique and i'll be honest with you absolutely has saved my life at times if i did not have that training if i didn't push myself and get pushed um even though I wasn't, I wasn't planning on being a ballet dancer, I actually was in a ballet, did ballet for five years by default, um, purely because it was the world I was surrounded by. So that was a great experience to have, um, even though it wasn't necessarily, I'd say, like the highlight of the career or the, the dream job. Mm. It was actually put me on path what I have right now. I've been able to, the good thing is, I think with the ballet, I've been able to adapt my classical lines to the work that I do now. Because actually a lot, maybe there are other circus artists that don't have that level of dance training. So it's not just, the lines are obviously very important, but mm. also the things like transitions and alignment and knowing where your, you know, dancers out there, you know, your second is, where your one job is, or rotation is to create certain shapes, certain lines, rather mm. than it being a picture and a picture and a picture. You want to, I like to show transitions. I like to show things that are floating, mm. as well as obviously I'm the, the, the dynamic side of things as well. So that training definitely understand when I'm in the air, it's understanding now there's no floor, there's no ground. So when you have your base, you can feel certain things. It's now putting that in the air, having no ground, being upside down and hanging from one foot, still trying to get a nice line. There's, there's about a thousand things going on. Wow. <laughs> there's a lot. Wow. <laughs> and I was just, I was thinking how you can create illusions when you've got, you know, swan foot is on the floor when I was thinking that. And you can make your legs look longer and stuff. But I guess you can do that in the air as well. It's just, it's just. It's knowing your body. And I do think it comes with age. I mean, when I was 16, I was, I was working with a body that I was still getting used to, I guess. Yeah. Whereas now I'm, I'm like, I feel very connected. It all just works really, really nicely mm-hmm. together. And you, tr- you know and trust your body. You know your limitations. You know how to push it in the right way yes. without getting injured and, yes. and all of that. Because when you're that young, you're still growing. Yes, you are. Strong. Bambi or nice. And <laughs> it's something you can but as we get older, we get a bit more restricted with maybe our mobility and things like that, but we get smarter. We understand actually what's safe and what's not safe or what's mm. necessary or unnecessary as well. You know, it's, not, it's yeah. okay to say no to work sometimes. <laughs> you know, it's a really good point, you know, with the whole not knowing your body and feeling like Bambi and I, so I really, mm. really love that analogy. <laughs> I'm going to be keeping that one. But, um, you know, dance is coming up. And there's so much pressure to be as best as you can be now at like 14, 15, 16. And, and your body is still changing and developing. And I think that people need to allow for that mentally, you know, to be like, I'm still in the process of change. And I need to, you know, just allow for that because the pressures can get very overwhelming from, and from peers and from teachers, you know, it needs to be better, better, better. But when your body is changing, 
it's hard to really know what your body can do. I think that's why, you know, you have your schooling and then you get to what is like company life or, you know, when you're performing as a profession, it's like that that standard and you're just able to let go and dance the way you want to but it's just this trust i'd say it happens about 21 22 you know where you really think i know i know myself now so yeah. for any of the younger ones out there just give it time yeah <laughs> give it time absolutely yeah absolutely because i think a lot of because also when you're growing not everyone i you know i, I don't teach as much now kids especially since lockdown, but I used to teach a lot. And I'm so careful with the language I use. There's, there's a way of talking to someone to encourage them, and there's a way to keep them up the arse as well without actually being horrible or trying to destroy them. You know, saying you're, you're you know, certain things like saying you're, you're, you're not dancing to your full potential is fine. Mm-hmm. Saying you're producing 60% of what you can do I need more. You can still be aggressive with that, but to say that someone is useless, you're wasting my time, ways ways of saying things like that, and uh, and that's obviously completely wrong. Like, in, in, as a teacher, it's was my, my responsibility to encourage because also I don't know what anyone in the room is capable of. I've got an idea of where they can, where they need to go, mm. but until you fulfil you, then no one can actually see that. No one can actually see that. And you're right. It's like at that age is when you kind of feel comfortable within yourself to actually then dance as a human in the room rather than a robot or to try and satisfy someone else. And that's, I think, the mis- big misconception is that we're off- we-, we almost have no sense of self-awareness or, or, or direction. We're, we're so used to being led and walking on eggshells that actually it's okay to make a mistake. It's fine. Yes. You can make a mistake. It's life. Life is not perfect, right? Yeah. It's the journey. <laughs> the journey is the most part, part of the thing, not the destination. Because if you do get there at 22, 23, mm-hmm. then where do you go from there? Number one. And perfection, it doesn't exist. So we're going to constantly looking and thriving for something that doesn't exist. You're never actually going to be happy. Sometimes you've got break eggs to make. Exactly. Order, right? Yeah. And that's it. So it's going to get a bit messy. But the, good, the main thing is that you just keep growing from everyone. You can say everyone's not perfect, not a problem. As long as the next one, Next thing you do, it has to get better, better. Make as many mistakes as you can, but don't make the same mistake twice. Yes, yeah. Do you know what? At the at the Royal Ballet School, I was always, um, and I think it was my mentality. I always wanted to do something, air quote, perfect. Mm-hmm. And unless I didn't feel I could do it perfect, I would stay on the sidelines and practice and practice and practice. And then I would come and let people see it. Mm-hmm. But actually, I think it's so powerful for the teacher student relationship to be like. I'm making mistakes. I'm not afraid to make mistakes because this is how we learn. And mm-hmm. the teacher's going, I'm with you on this, yeah. you know, and Absolutely. practice makes progress. I say this to my kids. My kids mm-hmm. are always saying it back to me and they're six and four. <laughs> practice makes progress, yes. not perfect. Absolutely, and, I agree. Yeah. yeah, perfection doesn't exist. And no. you, your studio time is, that's your, that's your development time. That's where you're supposed to make mistakes. That's mm. where you're supposed to show vulnerability show you know show your teachers where you're very strong where they can push you and tell you these are your strength you should definitely excel at this but also where your weaknesses are to say keep an eye out it's just careful of it you know mm. you, it looks good you probably get away with it but just keep an eye out don't let this become a bad habit because you won't realize because you're so strong in other things you'll try and cover it up and yeah so i think it's just really important in that development process to be very very open about everything, but again, because we're such perfectionists at times, we're worried about disappointing people. We only want to show it when it's perfect. Yeah, and and we forget actually sometimes there are some nice people that are happy to be in that room with you that aren't are going to be um, encouraging. Yeah, about the the imperfections. Mm. In what I wish I had, I mean, maybe it might have been my own limitations, but I never felt like I could go to the teacher and go, "I'm really struggling with the step." Mm. I would just go, I've got to try and figure this out yes. away from the teachers. So when they next year, I can just impress them. Again, it was all about external validation, not about my internal, yes. you know, satisfaction with it. Mm. So it was, it was slightly wrong. I know that it's changed a lot now. And like you said, the wording, the, the terminology that's used, it is a lot more sensitive to the individual, which I think is good. I think it's still, mm. it's still in in progress i think you know hopefully it develops over some years yeah. i think the ballet is still it's still tough 
It's still tough. Yeah. I feel honest with you. So I've done a little bit of work with Prada. It's a really good friend of mine. I also trained her um, as a ballet dancer. She now works with Prada. And actually, they are, with the kids now, um, becoming more aware of the mental health as well as the physical health. Fantastic. As well. So they are, they are doing a lot of development as well, mm. which is so lovely. Really, really lovely to hear because I think, like I said, it's the most important thing is, is a well rounded dancer. That's not just externally, like I said, but internally as well. So they are doing it. It might take a little bit longer than what we needed, but at least, you know, it's a step in the right direction. So definitely. Well. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how you, I'm going to move away from the ballet. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, we can, we can stay, we can stay oh here and be like, the, a dark path. <laughs> <laughs> Because as much as you love ballet, you know, that's not what you're doing anymore. You use mm. it as a foundation and you've moved on. So, but how did you go from ballet through mm. to pole dancing and acrobats? So while I was young and still training, I was training, I say training as a gymnast, it was more tumbling. So it wasn't as refined as a gymnast. Okay. A bit more, I would say a bit more parkour without being parkour back in the day. <laughs> it was just something to like fly up the wall from. And then, um, so did ballet for a while, but then I ended up doing musical theatre. And while well, so I was in the Western for a few years, and I was more of a, to be honest, more of a commercial dancer, because I'm mm. sure I'm five, seven, a bit more compact, not as, as badly. Um, so ended up doing more commercial work. Uh, like I worked for an illusionist, so, um, so many different styles. I was always, and it was really odd because I was never the person or the job. I was always the, it was really weird. When I was in a ballet company, I was the gymnast. When I was doing more acro, it was like, oh, that's the ballet dancer. When I was in a contemporary company, oh, that's the musical theatre. When I was doing musical theatre, oh, that's the gymnast. Oh. So it was so weird. I just never, like you're not quite catching up. <laughs> right. I was always like trying to, you know, I was always like, oh, I'm trying to fit, right? How am I supposed to? I, it was never, not in a bad way. I never felt like that when I was working that way. It was a struggle, but I, I was always aware of it. Mm. And if anything, I just embraced not being like everyone else you I always thought, stood out i'm here I, exactly i thought yeah. I'm, I'm new from the start i'm really short so i'm really going to stand out for the wrong reasons so let me then if i'm if they're going to if people are going to look at me let them let me give them something good to look at okay i don't look like everyone else i'm not going to move like everyone else but i'm here for a reason so i'm going to give you a show i want you to look at it and go oh didn't quite fit in but i there was something different about him he did bring something to the show he brought something different and that person by themselves can stand alone and that was the most important thing for, for me I understood I was never going to be in one place for so long because it didn't fit, it didn't work. Mm. The seasons would change, they'd always need something new. So I always knew I had to keep moving around. So I ended up, as I said, doing musical theatre for a while. I did some Lion King. And actually, there was a girl who was in Lion King who uh, left the show about a year or two years before me. Mm. And then after she left, I said to her, who's a much older, I said, What are you doing with your fitness? Because I don't do weights or do much. That. I've only ever done dance classes or my gymnastics, but I hadn't really done a lot since the show. And uh, she said, uh, I'm teaching pole here. Oh. She's teaching pole here <laughs> at the studio. She said, uh, just come down, just do a course and see how you like it. She said, I think you will really, really like it because I know you and I know your background, you like me. She said, I think you'll really like it. And I did. I did one course and I thought, right, how do I make this my life now? How do I? I was, I just, because I'd, I'd, I'd taken about a year off dance. Right. Not dancing properly or fully. I'd still okay. taken class every now and then, but you know, mm. you're just trying to figure out. I was mm. old, it was like 31, 31, 32 maybe. And I was like, oh, what am I doing? Like trying to, you know, generally now I'm like, if I'm still trying to audition for things, I'm auditioning for kids that are like 10 years younger than me. And I'm like, am I, do I have the energy? Do I, do I look like I'm youthful and sprightly or whatever, how I move, yes. you know, I, I don't know, <laughs> you know, I'd like to feel it, but you're feeling more tired. <laughs> it's taking longer to warm up and slightly longer to cool down. Uh-huh. <laughs> so I found a new way of working, like really, and what was, what was great, because she was teaching other venues as well. So I basically signed up for all these other venues and I just followed her every day. And every evening I was training with her. So I was training about six, seven times a week, which was mm-hmm. great. And then I got good very quickly. And then she said, from there, I can only guide you. I can't teach you. She said, because you're already at a level now. Because you've learned it very quickly. But you need to start looking at other people, like at other big international pole artists and follow them. Or see if you can uh, 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 fly out, do, do some workshops with these people and, and get to know these people because they will be able to guide you better than me. So I did that. I did as many workshops um, with as many guys as I could. And I really sort of found my 
my way of working. And then there was another girl I got introduced to from her, Kirsty, Kirsty Bunn. And uh, we started doing uh, pole, we're doing pole classes together. And this new girl was doing a lot of competitions. She said to me, oh, you would actually do quite well in competitions. So we started competing and then we decided to do duet as well. And um, which was lovely. And so she kind of got me into the real sort of competition level, like really, you know, not, mm. not just doing fun, like we need to really- Proper really, competitions, that's really, amazing. Yeah, like, like, like with the dance, get the technique up solid. You can't just be like, mm. but also I didn't know what a high level of pole technique was because I was just watching. So it was when I started doing competitions and I started really analyzing my eye was getting faster and better, I could see. So what was really lovely is that we both won, uh, so the last competition I did, and I wanted to leave it there, leave it on high, was 2018, was Pole Art Greece, which is the European Pole Championships. And she came fourth for her solo. I came first for my solo, and we both won doubles Woo! on the same day. So no one, I think from up to now, no one from the UK actually made the top five, that how we did. So That's yeah, incredible. We pushed, we pushed. And then, but then I realized also it's not a lot of money in it. Not oh sort of really yeah. there's no fun there it's a very an excellent platform mm. um to to workshops if you want to do promotion as a pole artist i was more interested in the game i thought i need to get back to performing now so i had a little bit of time away from dance understood it was more than just dance i needed and actually entering that world and i thought i need to combine these two together this is really really fun so i brought her cheryl Back in the studio, so she never really performs, but she came from a very gymnastic competition background. I said, Right, let's create something, let's play. So we said, Right, so we should restart again, let's see how we work together on mm -hmm. a, an artistic side of things. And luckily, everything worked out really, really well. Mm. And then that's how we kind of got introduced to cabaret, and that's, that's where that started. Amazing. Mm. It's such a journey that you went on, and even though you weren't dancing, you were still very, very active, and it was mm -hmm. just like you were gathering all the bits of talent that you needed to then do yes. what you're doing now. I did, and the thing is, I didn't even know at the time what I needed. I didn't know I needed this, I needed that. I was just taking everything I could and just seeing whether I, it was going to facilitate me or not. And some things did, some things didn't, and that's absolutely fine. So I was, again, I didn't come into this, into pole or circus thinking, oh, well, I've got so many years of dance background. No, no, this is a whole new world. I came in, I went blank canvas. Yes, use your you know, your technique, your dance technique, mm. that's, that's like your bag of tricks for later. But you are fresh, you are new, and that, that's the biggest, I think, humbling thing as a performer, and the biggest mistake some of them make. They think they're coming in from a different background, but they already got more advanced than everyone else. Because actually, sometimes having other habits is harder to undo, so it might take you longer. Come in fresh, like, absorb everything new, because it's all, all a new technique. And then you combine what you have. Mm. Everything. And that's why makes a well-rounded performer um, by who's studied each uh, technique, each form at its best, and then implementing the things that they've had, just to give it you know, a little bit of decoration yeah. here and there and everywhere. I think that's a really good approach. Mm. And so many people would be doing that, like coming in going, well, I did ballet, so this is what I bring. And I think even I'm guilty of that. As you were saying, that I was like, oh, yeah, I think I did that a little bit. You know, and I think, that that's probably the default, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, well, I was with the Royal Ballet, so if I want to do a bit of burlesque, but well, I've got my ballet, I can put it onto point, and, and I was the ballerina in the burlesque world. But I lost interest quite quickly, and I think that I... I mean, I, I'm not sure if burlesque was going to be a long-standing thing. It was something that I wanted to try. It was on my bucket list, and there yeah. was a way in, so I did it. But I think should have gone in just like, I am really new to this industry. Mm -hmm. I need to learn everything about this industry and not go in as the ballerina who's now entering the burlesque world. But I did some ballet back in the day, but I need to learn now what's going to make me successful in this industry. Yeah. I think that's a really good approach. Absolutely strip away mm. everything that we used to hide behind. Yeah. That was strength mm. so in the same way like if you want to yes you can have that uh, ballet training the ballet background if you're doing burlesque you don't then want to put the ballet on top of the burlesque no i get you need to be new exposed, yeah absolutely exposed do everything even though it feels wrong against your technique like you know a sickle foot or whatever there's there's a reason for <laughs> it 
there's a reason for it. And then later you decide, actually, I'd like to go somewhere in between or let me go back up. You have to understand the technique before you break it, you know, learn the rules before you break it. That's the most important thing. And then when you break them, then you start to your pieces of the puzzle together to create your picture. Yeah. It's who you are as a performer. Because the last thing I, would, I ever wanted to be was someone saying, oh, look at that dancer in the air, as opposed to that's an aerialist or that's a performer. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, when the first time I saw you, I thought, my God, that guy can spin. Mm-hmm. Now, <laughs> check out his Instagram, some videos of him spinning. <laughs> Better yet, go and see a show. But my God, I've never seen anyone spin as fast. A few people have said to me, you're like one of the fastest spinners. So how, <laughs> how is that possible? I mean, honestly, I, I was in shock when I saw it. I mean, the first thing I thought was, my God, is he dizzy? But then it was when you came out of it and you went, bang, stood really st- strong and then just smiled at us. And I was like, he doesn't look dizzy at all. What the <laughs> hell is his secret? So what is your secret? Go on. <laughs> there is no secret. No, it's okay. So it is, okay, I'm just going to sound very conscious to what we just said about, <laughs> yeah, but the dance technique has come into that. Yeah. So I am spotting, but I can't see. That's another thing. So I am, I am still moving the head, still trying to keep the eye focused. It's going about 15 times faster than it normally would as a if you were doing pirouettes. Yeah. But it does mean that the recovery time is much faster. So, but then also I feel safer because I'm using that dance technique of alignment, spot, shape, and, and, and making sure you're not spinning on, on, mm. on, on rhythm, finding the rhythm. Then now I don't have to technically worry about falling over or being necessarily solid on my leg because I'm on a piece of equipment that is hanging. So I'm safe as long as I don't let go. So yeah. as long as I keep my shape tight, strong and then i get the rhythm going and actually you can actually go as fast as you want i just happen to like going really really fast <laughs> i just love going really really fast some people do some people don't um but yeah there's no secret i just you just have to like it it's like going in the air the amount of people actually when i teach well as well who uh are afraid of going that far up the floor mm. yeah actually for some it's thrilling for some it's the worst feeling they could ever feel so for me spinning it's great. I love it. It's like you're in a child coming out through your dream job. <laughs> it is. It is. And I remember filming myself early on spinning. And I was like, I don't look like I'm just split. I look, it's like the blurry, mm. really, really blurry. <laughs> like the world's moving. I thought, I, I quite like that image. That's quite nice. So it's very effective. Yeah. Like massively <laughs> effective. Do you, do you have like a, a ritual that you have to do a routine to prepare for that? Because obviously you can't eat. And then go straight on. You, there's no. got to be a process. Um, well, just make sure I eat well throughout the day. Like if I, uh, let's say, show start eight thirty, mm. maybe nine. So on a day say where I'm not teaching, okay, if it was just like a regular day, and I just have to have the day off, I'd probably get up about noon. noon You're a performer. It's okay. As a performer, <laughs> I know some people are like, "How dare you? <laughs> Lazy." No, but in fairness, when you guys are asleep, I'm not half. Yeah. Hanging upside down. You yeah, know, yeah. when you guys are like watching whatever's on TV, I'm like, you know, hanging from a foot, whatever, <laughs> hoping for this, you know, thinking, gosh, this could be the last time. No. Um, but then, yeah, so I'll get up about maybe noon, one o'clock, have a good breakfast, like a really, you know, loads of everything protein, bread, and coffee, and everything. Mm. Has. And then I would um, probably just do a bit of admin and then just go to the gym. I go to the gym just to warm up. So not, not do like a heavy workout, go for either a swim or a little sauna just to get the muscles moving slightly because obviously what's hard is that you've just been in bed and you go to the show. That's mm-hmm. the hardest thing. But then these bones, <laughs> these old bones and muscles, take a little bit longer to gear up. So I just need to move throughout the day a little bit more. And then probably about five, six o'clock, I'll have like some rice, some chicken, some pasta. So not heavy, but like enough to fuel me. Because even if I eat too early, too much, crash. So you just got to have enough throughout the day to maintain, maintain, maintain. And then even at the show, I'll have like bananas, uh, some sweets, maybe, or whatever, you know, <laughs> sugar rush, or some lemonade or water. But it's just, it's just to stay on top of it. Because again, you don't, you don't want to be too full and or too hyped. Because again, you've got your show running for like two half to three hours. Yeah. You can't sprint a marathon. You just need to like know when to step in, step out, lift it up. Mm. Then, you know, um, there was one time actually, so there was one time I remember, feeling really weak and tired. I was about to go on four um, straps, 
And in the very beginning, this one has been really, really fast. And I had like half kind of what I did. I thought I should, it should just hopefully kick in. And then, um, yeah, just start spinning. And because of the speed and the pressure, <laughs> lemonade just started to come up. <gasps> and I thought, uh oh, uh oh. And I could fit, I was up here and I'm going to choke. So I took a deep breath. Then I went upside down. So I'm now upside down, spinning like a man, try, desperately trying to get this lemonade down. Because if it comes up, it's going to go everywhere. And if there are certain venues, seating. <laughs> certain venues weren't like that, I was at a venue that would not appreciate that at all. It would have been like a really horrible, oh, nasty trip. God. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, timing wise, food, drink, everything. But more than anything, I think it's just it's having the right mentality you know, if you say you're tired, you're going to be tired. It doesn't matter whether you are or not. If you say, oh, I'm so tired, you're going to be tired all day. If you yeah. are tired, but you go, right, now, fine, I'll be fine, just keep moving. It's mind over matter. Yeah. Keep the body moving. Because, again, you have chosen this. You've got two options. You just step up or you're going to be dragged. But it's my choice mm -hmm. to be on stage. No one often goes, please come and perform. Please come and perform. Like, this is a choice. I've decided to choose this industry. Thankfully, it's chosen me to a certain extent as well. It's mm -hmm. allowed me to work and, and there. And so no one's going to say, are you okay? It's, you know, oh, do you, do you want some time off? I take responsibility for myself. So I have to make sure my diet, my rest, my lifestyle, with family and friends, everything has to facilitate that. So, yeah. you know, because again, no one understands the hard work that goes into it, nor they should. So it's, it's our job to make that fun. Um, fantasy and that fun moment for someone else I have to be fun if I don't feel fun then you know so yeah. I have to enjoy it if I don't enjoy it I've always said the moment I don't enjoy it that's the time to do it away give it to someone else because there'll be someone else that will have hopefully just pass the baton they can just carry on mm. with faces so you know, we're not changing lives here, but we're just making people smile I don't know <laughs> I mean I I'm buzzing for quite a long time after I've gone to see a show and it really does make me feel happy. Mm. Like it, it, it does last longer. It's not like the lights go up and you go back to your life. You're left with this real feeling of joy, but in, you're inspired even if you're not like, you're not going, oh, this is what I want to do next. But you're just like, yeah. how incredible are they? How incredible have they made me feel? And it yeah. does have an impact. And I think the yeah. more you go to the theater, and the more you listen to great music and the more you go and see cabaret shows and all things, you're just going to be in this really, really good mental mm. state. I think that it is so important to go and see shows. I mean, the arts, it needs more money into it Absolutely. for sure. I mean, I don't want to get too political on that one, mm -hmm. but I think go and see shows because it is good for your mental health. It's not, I mean, yes, go to the gym, do all things that's good for good for you but going to see things that opens your eyes and just makes you feel really really happy you're hearing music you're you're bouncing off the energy of the people on stage and in the audience it is just it is magical and i don't think enough people are going to the theater so if you're not going to the theater please go let's go support the arts <laughs> but i agree I, I definitely think um like lockdown was a big example actually of Obviously, there was still TV going on, but there was a lot less. There was a lot less. And actually, in some way, if it wasn't for social media, or if it wasn't for like Zoom or whatever, like we would have only had the TV. And even that was very limited. So it just goes to show actually how important it is. If you think about it, everyone listens, pretty much everyone listens to music on their way to work. Throughout the day, watching podcasts, make sure you watch this one. Yes. <laughs> and, you know, these things are really important to have this sort of level of entertainment. So, and obviously, performing. Singing, acting, dancing is a huge, huge thing that vibrates with us all. It really, you're right, it really does. It, a song can make you happy, a song can make you sad, it can move you, it can put you in, a, it can put you in the right place, mm. it can spark a memory um, or, or, or something. But it does it, it does it in such a sort of almost like a fairy godmother way. Like it's not like, da da da, -da here it is. It's like you hear it and it's like in the background, you realize what you're feeling. So when I, when I say you're not changing lives, I, I, I mean, it's yes and I, I, you know, you, I want to step in, make you feel something. And as you're feeling it, you go, what was that? And I've got on to the next, on to the next, on to the next. Like, as a performer, that's what I personally like doing. It's like creating that moment for you to then take away for yourself and go, what was that? I don't say it was something. I don't quite know what it was, but it sparked something. 
And I think that's that's the most fun part of what I do is that mm. by the time you realize it, gone, then it's like the intrigue. Oh my gosh, so obviously, hopefully, you'd be like, I'm gonna go see more theatre. Because I think it's really important as humans to actually see people on stage and have that human connection. Because the TV is one thing, but to see another human in the room that inspires you. I mean, yeah. we've all seen, uh, uh, I'm sure we've all got like a, a song that we love to watch on TV or artists or whatever. But when you see that person live, very different feeling. It is. Very different feeling. Like it, 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 it wakes you up as a human. Yeah. You feel things that you never thought you could feel. Definitely. I mean, I went to the ballet recently. I watched the Bermeral Ballet do Black Sabbath. Mm. Now I've seen photos of it. I've seen I've seen videos of Black Sabbath on TV, and I thought, right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go and watch this. I got the last remaining tickets. <laughs> I was so chuffed. I was like, it's a sign. I'm supposed yeah. to go back and see all this. But it wasn't just about watching the show and the performers. It was the acoustic value mm. of it. You know, when you're when you're watching it on TV, you've got you, maybe you've got surround sound, but you know, it's still you're not you're not being brought into it as much as when you go to the theatre. And I was I wasn't just looking on the stage; I was looking around and going, oh "My God, this is amazing!" Yes, yeah. You know, so there's just there was so much to it. The, I I mean, I can't speak highly enough for the arts. This is why I'm doing this, you know. But it is it's just pure magic. It, it makes really a difference, is. and you're right. It's just it's like it's not as perfect as TV, but it's so warm. Because you see everything, you see the sweat, you hear them breathing, you hear the point shoot hit the floor. You know, on TV, you, that would be as is out, unless mm. it was there for TV. But hit that, you've got everything real. Yeah. There. Um, and, you know, obviously with TV, this sense of voyeurism, you're looking into that world, but all the when you go to the pit, you're in their world. Yeah. So it's, you have to now just sit down and take it all in. You know, take everything, everything that's good, everything that's bad. It might be a show stop, is it whatever. I don't know, Kurt Michael. You know, you never know. That's nope. that's the beauty of live theatre. It's all your part of this experience. It's going to happen. Even though you eat each former each company, they might have ninety shows this season or this year. The show that you're in is only going to happen once. Mm. So it's we're all in it together at the same time. There's no second take. There's no rewinding. There's no pausing. Going to the ice, cream, go get some ice cream, whatever. You you when it says go, you go. You're yeah. on board with them. You let them take. On that journey, because after that it's done. You don't get to watch it. You don't get to reveal it. You just live in that one particular mm. moment, which I think is so, so lovely and so, so different. It's just a much, much more different experience. And again, to tap into human emotions and feelings is is really, yeah, it's just really. I think it's such a dope thing. Yeah, <laughs> time, exactly. Because you know, even as a performer, I perform, but I, I am still inspired by other people as well, and I love watching other performers because it just really you know it just kind of re reignites my fuel but also just lets me know if there are other incredible things out there i just think yes we're doing well going well i love i love and especially love seeing my friends in the show yeah i'm so proud um i get to go watch a show but i get to watch them in the show and i get to watch them being so amazing to other people i get to go it's my you know <laughs> you, you're experiencing this but i know this person it's so lovely that they get that they're in a position to give so much more back to people as well and i think as a community i think that's just really just we need more of it yeah more, more, more. i'm just glad we're you know covid is i mean it's, it's still around but it's sort of a thing in the past you can still go to shows and stuff you know it's yeah. thank goodness and, you, and you're right the impact that that had to where everyone was just restricted to their homes with the flat screen tv mm-hmm. where it just you know i mean i was thinking thank god for netflix really that was that was, <laughs> that was my thing but still, you know, it's it's not the same as getting no, out there and going for not. meals and all of that. Yeah, yeah. When you're when you're about to do your show, do you mm. ever get do you ever get nervous? I mean, you seem like such a a confident <laughs> confident person, but do you do you ever get that feeling? Always, you do. Always, always get nervous. Always, always, always. Like I said, every show is different. Mm. I don't know what can happen today. I don't take anything for granted. Obviously, I train. I do, you know, you do safety checks, I do my technique, I know with the music what I'm doing. Um, even if it doesn't go well for some reason, I, they, I know how to plan the moves carefully, creatively, and then go to the next one. But I get nervous, absolutely, because I just don't know. Just don't know, because it's, again, but also everyone's different, it's a live audience. I get nervous, because I do think, oh, today could be the day no one likes it. And they boo. <laughs> it could, Aww. you know, sometimes, I mean, thankfully not, but, but no. most, but every audience is different. Some audiences, 
responses are so like overwhelming and loud. It's all, oh my God, amazing. So lovely. And some do enjoy it, but they're very quiet as well. So there is that nervousness of, is this even appropriate? Do they like it? Am I good enough? I th- I'm still constant, always there because even, you know, I always try and do more and more. I want to do, be as best as I can today and tomorrow is another level of excellence that I need to achieve. I need to do more. So I do, yeah, always mm. get nervous. And if you don't get nervous, what two things? Either you're not really doing that well or you're not enjoying it. You need to rethink why you're on stage. Now, I think being on stage is a privilege. It is. It's the one you work for. Yeah. Very rarely is it handed to you. But when you're there, it's not, you have a responsibility that to, to please, to, to touch, to move, to whatever. And that, that's quite a big responsibility. So you yeah, have to be nervous. Mm. You can't just think, oh, it's one in the bag because everyone's different. Yeah. yeah. Everybody's different in that audience. That, that nerve, so it's just enough that it doesn't throw you, it mm-hmm. fuels you. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's a scare. I, used, I think I did have stage fright very early on. Very early on. But I think when I first graduated, I, mean, I was doing like arenas in Germany and they were mm-hmm. like 40,000, 30,000 sort of seating, I'm sure. Like that. But I mm-hmm. kind of got thrown into it from when I trained. Mm-hmm. Then that happened. Like, there was nothing that prepared me for it. Of course, you're like, you can get very overwhelmed by the size of the space and the noise. So actually, there was at first going, mm. oh my gosh, this actually wasn't quite ready for this. But it was lovely it happened, but there was no, but you know, it is, yeah, it happened. Yeah. I think the nerves are healthy. Yeah, I mean, I definitely got nervous to a point of, it was dangerous because I was feeling almost ill with the nerves and, I, you know, that you feel like you've got this frosted glass and you're not fully present. I've, I've mentioned that in a mm. recent podcast. But, um, yeah, just just enough. The butterflies in the tummy, but you're there going, oh, I'm so excited. But there's this little, but it keeps you on your toes. It keeps you present. It keeps mm-hmm. you really, really on the ball. And you're right, you know, if you're, if you're not feeling nervous, maybe it's not the right, mm. the, the right platform for you, yeah. you know. Do you have a favorite production to perform for or a favorite venue? And what, what's it like when you've got everyone together about to do a show where everyone's doing completely different acts? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you say on camera, but actually, no, I'm going to say it's fine. Um, <laughs> I work, I think, okay, every venue, firstly, I work in is lovely. And the reason why I work in all the venues that I work in is because I enjoy it. If I didn't enjoy it, I just wouldn't be there. Um, I think Bunga Bunga is like, <laughs> the craziest, mm-hmm. most fun, most. It's it's such okay. So fir- okay. So firstly, especially after lockdown, uh, the venues were very very careful about the energy they brought backstage. Right. Because there have been such fabulous incredible artists that don't quite work energy wise. Some divas, some not so positive people. I don't I get it. You don't have to be a positive person always, always, always. But it's just, it's a very small, you know, when you're backstage, the room's not much bigger than the central square. It's right. tiny. And at times it's about 11 <laughs> between 9 and 11 people. And there's a lot of stuff going on. Not just you, your costumes, but there's a lot of props moving around. So, more, most importantly, you've got to be a team player, number one. Because unless you are like a Beyonce, or Neo, or someone big and famous, and have as your name on the show, you are part of the puzzle. Part of the puzzle. And like I said, I'm not there every night, so there's someone else. Everyone is interchangeable and can be interchangeable. So but you're, you're picked there because of your special talent, but there's, it's more than just being a great performer. You have to be a team player. There have been times where I've had to step in and do other acts, help other, some of the actors, even just help with in and out of costumes. You know, there's a blow up pizza that needs blowing up. Someone's no blow up. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll blow that up. Someone needs this. Do you have any string? Whatever. It's all chaos. So it's got to, you've got to help each other out. You don't have to. You can't. If you choose it's not for you, then that's not for you, unfortunately. But it is mad. It's so mad. You, but also, there are times actually I forget, and I do sometimes I try to watch the show from backstage and just appreciate and actually, even though I'm used to these people, I'm used to the craziness that we felt silly stories and rude stories and things that happen on the weekend and you know you get to know their name their mom and their kids and everything like and they actually become more human mm-hmm. in the room which is so lovely and then you just take a moment you look at them on stage and you go oh, this is actually quite amazing and i think that's the most wonderful thing to experience to go you're such an incredible person all around you on stage off stage backstage at home and then that's usually all i'm surrounded by and every now and then i just need to take a moment and go this is something really 
there's some talent, some really, really super duper talented people in such a small venue. And it's so lovely. Like I genuinely, even like the weekend that just went, there was a bunga. We, I think that's the hardest I've laughed um, in all year. I mean, we laugh all the time anyway. You know, we tell really dirty jokes and always have a laugh. But so I think, I think this Christmas season just started. We're all a little bit tired, but we're all together and rehearsing stuff together and we're all in hysterics and it is it is an absolute riot yeah. backstage but what's so lovely as well is that if people are feeling a bit not so great they will just do what they need to do but then i personally come to me not in a way like it's fun it's like do you need help do you need do you need if you want to stay quiet i'll stay away do you need someone to talk to do you need to let i can let the managers know that something whatever but that's not just me, but with everyone else, and that's what's really, really nice is that you're not, you're not, you, you don't, you don't feel like someone's like trying to stab you in the back, or you know, or if anything happens, you do feel like actually there will be someone there to try to help out as well. And I think that's what's super important because we all know if you go to work, you laugh, you, if you enjoy your work, you'll enjoy, you'll enjoy, you'll enjoy life a lot more because you spend so much time there, and that is a big part of the experience. If you have eight hours a day of negativity. Mm. On and on and on. It's just it's soul destroying. And even if you do like what you do, it's not fun. So I think it is really, really important. I've been really, really lucky. But I think Bunga's been the craziest, but the, the funnest places. It is uh, fantastic there. I've yeah. been there. I went there before COVID and I really just loved the energy. It was really, really good place. Yeah. Um, just gotta get on board. There's nothing oh. about also you go downstairs, there's little no Wi Fi. So someone's like, right, phones away, guys. Just enjoy the experience. So mm. Because it's downstairs, it's almost like, oh, what happens if I'm going to take it? <laughs> the craziness that goes on down there is insane. It's fun. It is fun. But you've got to get on board. I love what you said about, you know, the offstage bit, the, you know, making sure that everybody is pulling together the pieces of the puzzle, mm. you know, in terms of the performance, the production. That's really, really lovely to hear. And I, and I, and I love that you also check in and make sure you know, you're not going in and being nosy, like you said. You're just like, you don't seem okay. What can I do to help this situation? Mm. You know, because everybody, you can't be always smiles and glitz and glamour all the time. Yeah. You know, life happens and sometimes it can be a bit shit. So it's just, yeah. you come to work and you're going to bring that energy. But then when you're with people, you're surrounded with who are in high energy, but also not like if you're down, you're going to get left there. But Let's bring you up mm. as well. Real teamwork. Yes. I think cabaret is possibly the best for that. Oh, absolutely. The absolutely. friendliest vibe. Yeah. yeah. I feel like with cabaret as well, because it's a weird one. I feel like cabaret, I don't know. Maybe I'm not speaking for everyone in cabaret, but I do feel like people who have chosen cabaret, um, whatever skill set they have, often landing cabaret because of the things that were supposed to work a certain way didn't work out so i feel like cabaret is like the raggy doll <laughs> of the performance world raggy yeah. doll bit, that makes sense like you know it's like i'm oh, sure to be ballet it didn't happen i don't think cabaret not to say that a cabaret is at the bottom because that's a completely different skill set it's not something that actually many people aspire to because maybe it's the way it's looked at it seems very you know they think oh the girls are naked and it's very low class because they can do that. Bearing in mind, anyone can take their clothing off, no problem, but not everyone wants to see everyone take their clothing off, guys. No. Burlesque, stripping, it's a skill. It is. It a is. skill to have, to keep someone's eye focused and also to have both male and female appreciate as well. Otherwise, it's just a bit like, it's a skill. It's, it it's an absolute skill. Just want to put it out there, please. Guys, it's an art You have form. no idea. Yes. Um, but, but cabaret, I feel like everyone's gone through some sort of thing because I don't think anyone's come out of college, uh, singer, dancer, whatever, going right. I'm going straight to cabaret. You try other things because it's not. I didn't know about cabaret when I started, but it's a world I fell into, and I'm so glad I fell into it. But I just wish that it was more exposed earlier on because it's always seen as very dark, very dirty, underground. Really, mm. I'm so surprised because my. My, in my mind, cabaret has always been something that has been held with very high regard. I mean, my, my dad, bless him, when he was alive, his favorite was cabaret. Yes. And so he always spoke about things and he loved musical theater, but he, 
he was cabaret in a sense. Yes. And, I, and I just love that. So I always had such, such respect. It is holding some of the most talented people. Yes. And it's just, you're seeing just a glimpse of what they can actually do, you know, in, mm. in an evening. And, yeah. you know, it's like leaving them wanting more, you yeah. know. I just, I, I think that it, there's, when I go to a cabaret show, I leave with more of a buzz lasting longer than mm. any other type. Yes. Because you're seeing a variety of performers doing mm. absolutely incredible things and, you know, just small little five-minute acts sometimes. And you mm. do, they're going away and you're like, no, yeah. come back. But at the same yeah. time, I'm definitely coming back yes. to see you again. Yeah, I think the, the more yeah. people can be aware of the incredible yeah. dancers there's, and performers. There's definitely more character and personality building as a cabaret than any other well I, at least what i've experienced when i was a dancer yes you have to have personality but in fairness with all due respect so all does for me when someone else leaves i'm filling in for someone else i'm coming in with all my skills but when i leave someone else's it's almost it almost felt like so at times like a favor whereas with the cabaret show it's for hiring you for you your look your skill the way you move the way you speak the way you everything so there's no two people alike in cabaret we might need to put another act in we can't replace you. And I think that's, as a cabaret performer, yes, you're right, actually, they had to develop that human interaction. How do I captivate room? How can I, on the fly, make a joke that's funny, slightly offensive, but incorporates everyone mm -hmm. as well? And it's hard to do. It's, you know, you could be a funny person in your group of social gatherings, your friends, but on stage, when it becomes a very universal situation, it's, it's very, you've got to be smart. Smart. This is what people understand as well. Most cabaret uh, uh, performers, hosts, singers, joke tellers—they are they're very, they're very smart. They're smart because if you make the whole room laugh, that's that's a hard thing to do. Yeah. Without looking or, or without making it forceful, I think a lot of them um, cabaret performers we've had we've had to take time to develop who we are as a person. Yeah, because we're not in line with everyone else. It's, mm. so, it's essentially a solo act. Yes. Everyone's a solo, even though you're still part of the night. It, that's it's. You got to captivate the whole room, and it's yeah, like I said, it's, it's taking, I suppose, maybe skills that you have learned, things that didn't go quite well, you know, maybe people have gone through trauma or whatever, and then use that to then create who you are, mm. whether that's a strength, that's a um, how can I connect with you as the audience, yeah, as well. and that's what's captivating as an audience. Sometimes we're like, oh my gosh, yes, I want to hear your sorrow because actually i'm going through something right now well, i'm i went through something so actually being vulnerable number one is really really important to be able to communicate or to at least captivate the audience but then mm. if you're able to make them laugh within that sorrow as well it's actually like paid therapy <laughs> i yeah. guess and actually if you do laugh laughing is like the biggest piece of therapy i think i've ever gone through as well you know it depends how you look at it. it's glasses half full glass half empty yes right? there's a situation so you can tell the story in a really, really horrible way. You can tell it in a really funny way that actually, number one, makes other people laugh, but actually helps you laugh through that pain and helps with the development as well, which I think is really, really important. Definitely. Do you, when you come out onto the stage, do you get a, a sense for the people that you're performing for? Do you, do, you, do you sort of connect with them before you start? Because I've noticed you come on stage and you're not straight away spinning. It may be your first move, but you have a moment where you, maybe... You, not sussing people out, but you know what I mean? Like you're, you're using that moment to connect to maybe go, this is the energy that I need to bring up a little bit more. Mm. Maybe I can, is that something that you can do? A sort of, I do, I think as a, as a character, number one, obviously as an audience, I, I try, I want to introduce myself, mm. um, where I look, where I move, whatever music's playing. So yeah, so it, the, the act doesn't start when I get on a piece of equipment. The act starts from when they say my name, it's quiet, whatever, I have to set the scene. So if I'm able to talk about I'm lighting to look like this, I'm to like whatever it is. So if I'm like a cowboy, I want it to be a bit of a saloon kind of bar. So I want very dim lighting. I want a spotlight. I want something. I want them to, to be a little bit like, boom, the focus is on that person. Um, and then I come out again, the character I play. If it's a smiley character, if it's a cocky character, if it's serious, if it's sad, I want you to be able to go, oh, sad. Oh, he's serious, whatever. Mm. Then it's not, not just very black. Then obviously in costume, and the sound. So I, would, I personally like a sexy, I like a story with my act. 
So going around, now going around, having eye contact with the person, eye contact, eye contact, eye contact, which I think is so important as a performer. Um, so you're not this sort of safe bubble, it's actually the connection that you have with the person, mm. is hopefully, because I, I felt like this as well, where I've, been, where I've been in the audience and other performers just take a moment, look at you, and they go away and you think, oh my God, that was for me. You feel so special. You're so right. So special. And you think it's, oh, that was for me. Mm. They didn't know today I was going to be sat here. That they somehow found me, gave me this look within their character, and I feel validated. I feel like I'm part, I'm still so excited. Yes. I'm part of it. I feel like I'm part of the show. I feel like without me here, this wouldn't go the way it was going to go. Because mm. it's really important. And it's so true for me as well. Because if I don't, not that I, I need the audience to clap or whatever, but actually the interaction is really important for me to how I feel. I can still deliver if it needs to be flat. And there have been times, sometimes they are a little bit, you know, it's a late Sunday one day, all of it, but that is like, still my job to do that. But actually, if, if, I get, if I give them all of me, they will give me all of them. And then that, that's where it really, really does work. And there have been times where I'm like, I'm so tired of it. But then, because when I see the faces, when I see them smile, when I see them clap, when I see them, and I understand my responsibility, it goes somewhere else. It really yeah. goes somewhere else. I want them to take me in initially, when I first walk out, get to know who I am, and then almost like an answer. But then, then it's like, right, let me do some amazing things. And I'll be, Whoa, that's happening in front of us. But then, yeah, I like to bring it down. I like to play, be a little cheeky, a little flirty, but just be a bit silly. So again, a little bit of comedy, a little fun, a little bit of interaction, and then do my skill set. And then, because it's so close, they feel like, oh, wow, right, that's there, you feel like it's touching, looking at me, staring at me. Um, yeah, and I think that's, that's that's really, really fun, that's really important. Mm. You know, again, it's that thing of like, I went through this as well when I was in, when I was in the audience, and someone from the audience would stare at me, just look. It wasn't, you just go, <gasps> yeah, did you, did you just look in my direction? Did you actually look at me? Either way, you're feeling something. Yes, you feel, you feel excited. Yeah. And, you know, yeah, what a buzz. Speaking of interactions and and, and all of that. Have you ever dated someone like within the cabaret scene or outside? Or do you, t- do you tend to go like, okay, well, this is my work. This is my performing. This is when I engage with the public or the people around me. I'm going to go with someone who does something completely different. Uh, done both. <laughs> <laughs> and for me personally, neither is worked. I think only because I'm meant to be single. Really? I enjoy being single. <laughs> I enjoy my company. I enjoy being by myself. I can sit in my house and just look at my four walls and I'm good. I'm absolutely good. Normally because I've got such a blessed work life, family life and social life. I've got such great in social interactions. Actually, being at home, that's my time. Um, but I've been dating people in the past, like serious relationships who are in the industry, not necessarily performers, but like behind the scenes a little mm-hmm. bit, which I thought was actually the, the best combination. Because I thought, yeah. no, obviously being gay, be another male. So I thought there'd be no competition uh, 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 as, uh, as another performer going sure. for the same job. Yeah. But then I thought if it's someone who, let's say, is a nine to five, who will never understand why I'm out working until, you know, mm. midnight on a Tuesday. <laughs> They'll never understand that. Um, but I thought someone in the industry that's behind the scenes was perfect because they obviously are in the industry. They understand the time but it's not going to be a competition no. in terms of this creative, like I'm, I'm technically artistic and they're going to be technical. And I thought that was the best route to go down, and it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He, whatever, everyone's got their problems. Everyone yeah, has their problems. Of and there are times. I, there are times where I really feel like oh, it'd be lovely to like actually have a hug. And there were a few times where you know just, things go wrong. And you're like, I just need a hug. I just need someone to say it's going to be okay. Mm. Just take take me to the side for a moment. Just go out. Just go. Just go for coffee. Let's go for lunch, right? I'm just going to talk to you. I just need to hear someone say it's going to be okay. Even though it's not, even though I know it's going to be okay, I just need that person, that partner. But then at the same time, I don't have to worry about if I do want to party a little bit longer. <laughs> I don't have to worry about, oh, what time I'm going to come back home. So I think for me personally, being single would be better. But it's, it's not for me. I've, but also, I've seen some other people in companies that I work in as well are now married with kids and they met in the company, which I think is so lovely. So not for me. Not for everyone, but it's for some. Yeah. And you can absolutely make it work lovely. But I think I'm just slightly too, a bit wild. And I don't No, to, really? Just, you, know, you won't see it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we both know, obviously. <laughs> 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 but 
been before, but you know, nightlife <laughs> is our thing. But um, we, yeah, it's just, I, just at the moment, no. Maybe, yeah. you know, if I make it to 80, if I'm able to make it to 80, maybe the last, if I've got another five, 10 years after that, I'd like to meet someone that I can just sit there and share crazy, crazy stories yeah. with and just bore each other. Because right now, the way this everything's going, but if I was to bring someone into what's going on right now, not only do I have to just be extraordinary to, 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 to be part of this, but they, I have to be comfortable that I can just leave them wherever they are, but then I have to be comfortable in their world. Maybe at the moment I'm not ready to give up what I have to be in their world, which I think is very selfish, but also I want to be very open and upfront and just mm. not waste any time. When I was a dancer, it was like, my relationships were second to my career. Mm. And I think as an artist, it has to be like that. And you're right, if it's someone has to really, really, really understand what you're going through. And if it's someone who's in the company with you or, you know, within the industry, they get it. The mm. unsociable hours, the fact that you do have to work really, really hard. And you see, you can, you can understand that. But when you're on the outside, mm. like especially with a partner that um, I've mentioned a few times, he, he just didn't get it. He loved the ballet. He loved that I was a ballerina, but mm. he found it really hard that he was just on his own every evening while I was dancing on stage. Yeah. It's, it is hard. Yeah. And it's yeah. hard for them because what it is, they, they want to experience life with you. Yeah. And actually, the evenings are that experience when you sit down, you watch TV together as a family, you go for a meal, you go to the concert, you know, you go, <laughs> you go somewhere, you want to you create that experience with the person. Um, and then if you've got the timetable and actually you are going to be more alone more yeah often. yeah if you are someone i guess who is creative that can create your own experiences it's lovely but sometimes some people are like oh well i can sign up for this you know but we're going to be together we're not really together together it whereas actually hard. maybe our ideal together is very different to other people. the reality yeah true. when it works it works and when it doesn't it really but does also, at the same time <laughs> nothing's perfect there'll Nothing, be couples no. that work at the same job or work the same hours that don't it's not all Disney I think that's the problem with Disney we grew up watching Disney <laughs> don't let it for you guys yeah, Disney the... it's not real we, we, we <laughs> expect some form of happily ever after we expect a little bit of a hill and then Disney but you never see happily, you never see after happily ever after you, saw, you, you don't see actually exactly it's you, like they, they, they meet and they fall in love and they live happily ever after but what does that mean yeah. that, that bit I mean you see that moment I, which is lovely when yeah. you see some drama oh gosh you fall in love we all do that and after you don't see Cinderella and it's charming I argue because I, do you know what that would be so funny if they added that in that would be, wonder, wouldn't it? <laughs> wouldn't like, be appropriate for kids real, I, mean, what? I, I, don't know. I think a realistic version expectation of yeah. what married life is because yeah. we all know even with the royalty and everyone it's, it's not perfect no of course it's it not isn't. perfect because we're human at the end of the day so you yeah. know they, I think it's again it's just, it's just what you make of your experience but I think also being very being very open from the start very open and realistic because you're more likely to find someone that is on the same level as you. You say, let's say, for example, someone says, I really want to settle down. No, you're, you're not ready to settle down. You kind of go, Yeah, I'd like to settle down. No one's happy because you're settling down and you didn't want to settle down. The other person is settling down. Mm. They don't feel like you're settling down because you said you were going to settle down, but you're not ready to settle down. Now you're, we're fighting. We're conflicting. Mm -hmm. We're two living two separate lives. So just be open. If you just say, Hey, I just want to party a little bit more, or I, I love my work, I've got very little time for anyone. Someone else will go, Oh, I love my work as well, and I've got very little time for someone as well. You might not be the person you thought you'd end up with, but actually, you're going to be a lot happier. You have to be a person. team. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that is the most important thing. That's what I've learned. If you're not a team, it, it doesn't work. You, mm -hmm. know, you have a lot of conflicting feelings, and it does have an impact for sure. Yes. Right, Jules. What's next in your <laughs> career? What is next in your career? What is next? I don't know. I mean, if I had a crystal ball, um, <laughs> I know what I would like. I know what I would like. Definitely. Okay, there are three things um, I would love to do. So number one is uh, coming from, I don't, we didn't touch too much on this, this one this time, but I didn't come from like a, such a supportive family. Uh, when it came to performing, I was kicked out of the house very early on. And mm. They were like, oh, you want to dance? Not this house. Boom. And they thought I was not gonna, I was going to come back. I didn't. So I genuinely started to learn how to dance in a car park and how to battle. And there was a <laughs> lot of not so good things happening in that car park. And especially as kids uh, were exposed to a lot of things that should have been exposed to. So I would love to, and the government getting involved in this as well, is 
and uh, what it is uh, again you know uh, how crazy and fast moving I was in ADHD and workplaces to actually create uh, a system or create a courses for kids that uh, can't sit behind a desk right because I couldn't so practical movement thing so initially artistic mm -hmm. for dance but to have like an actual some some but then let's say if you're studying dance let's say we go more on the biology so so that will give you you'll have to also study uh, like the body anatomy physiology blood chemistry to a certain extent as well so then that will allow you if then even if you don't necessarily want to do dance later that could allow you to move into something like physiotherapy or nursing or some something that's a valid uh, qualification that mm. allows you to be uh, uh, that allows you to move from one place to another to another sometimes as a dancer it might just be like I, there's nothing else. What do I go to? Some go, okay, choreography, after choreography, then what? Actually, to have something. So, like plumbing or. or mm. uh, something that's being, quite hands on. Yes, yeah. yeah, yeah, like a mechanic or electrician mm. or, something, or architecture. Not, not sat behind a desk, you know, if I have three apples and one can two apples. No, no. like actually <laughs> getting kids to move physically and applying, like, problem solving. Yes, so, I've got I've got in my mind where like you're doing maths for adding and subtracting, but you've got these like you've got physical things that you would have to run from one corner to the other to move it to yes. taking away to adding. So it's very very active, but you're mm. still learning the adding, education. Yes. I love that adding physics, adding logic, adding, mm. adding problem solving because everything in love that yeah yeah that, and actually and also more than anything, it gets not just working but working together as a team, understanding that's what's going Sometimes you haven't had this, so I see. You're not learning people system. skills either, which yes. is one of the most important skills. Super, super important. Yeah. Because actually, yes, you can be very clever, you can be very smart, but actually, mm. it's making you it's whether you can be smart. I think yes. it's, it's that, you know, it sounds a bit mad, but, <laughs> you know, it's a little bit, it's networking, socialising as well. But then also, there's so much more that is available to people actually who don't socialise and you don't know what you're capable of, you might miss out on a lot of other opportunities mm. as well. Yeah, I think definitely I want some a scheme or something that allows kids to physical to but then give them a qualification that is valid later on. But also, you still have to, still have to turn up or well, not turn up, and then it's it, it's just move this art industry or, or 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 people who want to be more physical in a different, slightly different way, and not just go from zero to ninety. Yeah, that would be the that would be my absolute dream. That, that would be my wonderful. thing. I'd love to leave here. Just go. Oh, someone created something that was for me. I love that. I love. Really good. Yeah. So, would you do it all again? The performing, <laughs> or if you if you had a choice, would you do it all again? And would you go? I'm going to take a completely different route. I don't know. I think. No, I would do it. I would do it because it's not been easy it's not been always the most fun thing there have been like some really 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 horrible times but there have been some equally incredible times that if actually if i didn't do this i would never have experienced this i've seen some wonderful things i've seen some incredible places i've met so many famous people so many amazing people i've had so many amazing experiences that actually if it wasn't through this dance this this, this performance career it wouldn't have happened in a parallel universe i don't know it might have been more settled but i don't know if i'd be any, any happier i don't know i would do it again but I, what i'd like to do is just say to myself actually what i'd like to do is go back and say to myself even before graduation graduating and go you're right you're right you're going to be everyone else everything that everyone else says is wrong you're right. Don't stop. Don't question it. Don't question what you're doing. If you feel it, it's a right feeling. If you think you can do it, you can do it. You just haven't got there yet. Do it. Do not procrastinate. Do not wait. Do not let the, the thoughts, the words of other people derail you. That's them projecting. You're right. Just do it sooner is what I'd say to myself. So yeah, I think I would. Yeah, <laughs> I love that. And that's for everyone. That's for everyone. No one knows what you're capable of. No one knows what you're capable of. You do you at your best. No one can do you do any better than you. But you just have to do it. And you know, you reach for stars, you might hit the sky. Cool. There we go. There exactly. <laughs> Jules, I'm gonna finish on that. That was fantastic. Woo! So next we're gonna be doing the behind the scenes, which yes. I think everyone should definitely tune into. 
going to be Absolutely. doing a bit of pole dancing. Yeah. Wish me luck. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Jules. You're amazing. Thank you. My pleasure. I loved this chat with the fabulous Jules. We laughed so much and I adore his energy. Definitely check him out. I've put details in the show notes and go and watch a show. Honestly, his talent is something else. Also, if you were interested in pole dance, I've put the details of pole people in the show notes. If you have any comments on today's podcast or any previous, please get in touch at candy.presents.podcast at gmail.com. Next up will be the Mother's Day special, and it really is special. I cannot wait for you to see or hear it. Be fabulous. Be you.